Hello again. In this video, we'll have a look at how we can work out the lifetime period of a customer for uh, customer lifetime value calculations. And I've got basically, we've got two things here. I've got simple and hard. Simple is when we have a retention rate of customers, and we would typically know that, how many customers continue on to the next year. So we acquired some customers in year zero and in year one. Of segment A, we've got 70% continuing on. Segment B, we've got 50% continuing on. And I've just averaged that out to be all customers. So basically, we, that's very easy to do, and I'll show you in a second. This is harder when the retention rate changes each year going forward. And typically, the pattern is this, that it will increase, because the people who are most dissatisfied will leave straight away. The remaining 70% have already dealt with the firm for a year. So by just naturally being satisfied, their retention rate will get higher and higher, even though there's a smaller group of customers, obviously. We lost 30% of them, but of the remaining 70, their retention goes up. So let's have a look at the simple one. Let's assume we had fixed retention rate. So this is very easy to do. A simple two-step process. We simply start with the churn rate, which is one minus what we're retaining. So we're losing 30%. And I'll just copy that down and across. So that's the percentage of customers that we are losing. And then the formula is very simple. It's simply one divided by that churn rate. So basically at a 70% retention rate, uh, we'll hold them for 3.3 years. 50% will hold them for two years on average. So some will leave before, some will stay longer. And that's obviously two and a half. Okay, our challenge here is that we don't have a fixed retention rate, and that is unlikely to happen in real life. So what I've got is 70%, 75%, and then from year three onwards, it's 80%. So basically, what will happen to 100 people? So I'll start off, I've got 100 customers. In the first year, I hold 70% of them, okay, which is that number there. The second year, I'm now holding 75% of them, which is that number there. And as you can see, that's declining because it's a compounding loss. And then finally, in our, our last year, we have 80% retention which are we are going to retain. Okay, so I want to fix that 80% number there. I'll just put a little anchor in there so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm basically just going to copy that down and that's 80% of the 42. And I can continue that all the way down. And I've got to go down 40 years or so, uh, which is probably a bit silly, but you can see by then it's a fraction of uh, a year. And basically what now what I'm going to do is sum all of those there, all of those numbers. I could go a bit further, but it's probably not going to change the calculation much. And I get that number, 432 years, but I started with 100 people. So I simply divided by my starting number, and I find that my average lifetime of this configuration is actually 4.3 years, uh, not 3.3, because retention has increased and will stay high. So basically, that's the two ways of calculating. If you've got a fixed retention rate, very simple to do, but probably unrealistic. Uh, if you have a an escalating retention rate, this is simple method. We'll work it out very quickly. Uh, check the links down below for more information about customer lifetime value.